Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I painted these whimsical stacked coffee cups. This is um, one of those 10 by 20 inch canvases and the first thing I did uh, before I started filming this tutorial, um, I, I did the traceable and I transferred it. So this is my drawing. Um, and I have it uploaded for you so you can download it and tape it onto three sheets of paper. So this is just a regular size um, sheet of computer paper that I taped together. And um, you would simply just get a sheet of graphite paper and place it below. So you lay it down on the canvas, shiny side down, and then lay your traceable on top of it, and then you can use any kind of um, utensil, a pencil or pen, and it'll transfer the design. So that is there for you to download. I also have an eight by 10 uh, version of that traceable as well on the website. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna turn my painting this way. It's kind of a, a a harder painting to film because it's such a long canvas but um, we're gonna paint the table first so there's the table line that actually uh, you'll need to draw because that's not on the traceable so just get a straight edge and draw a horizontal line um, behind the bottom cup so you have your bottom edge of the table but we're gonna paint that entire table area burnt umber I have a three quarter inch flat wash brush dipped in the water and pat dry. I loaded it into the burnt umber and I'm gonna use the full width of the brush to um, create the, the thicker strokes and um, horizontal strokes all in that area. Of course we have that sort of ellipse shape of the plate that we have to go around so you can um, go in a different direction to outline that area. And also if you have a different size brush, in fact, uh, I believe I use three different size brushes for this painting, um, but you can grab one of the smaller brushes to kind of get into the smaller areas if that's helpful. And also to get that paint to flow a little bit better, dipped my brush in some of the water and then grabbed some more of that paint. So that kind of helped to get that brown to kind of flow, but it is just a nice thin layer of um, the brown right there on the table. So here I have my number four round brush and I'm just gonna get in there and get closer to those um, edges. Um, I don't wanna paint over the cup or the plate, just wanna get all that negative space around it painted in. I have my video speeding up here slightly, so press pause when you need to. And also, um, like I said before, if you really need that brown to flow a little bit better, just grab a little bit of water on your brush. Uh, make sure when you're doing the water thing that you kind of swirl around in the paint a little bit so it's not gonna turn really drippy when you get it the paint on your canvas. But um, just that little bit of water gets it to flow a little bit better. It's a nice thin layer and um, we're gonna do some wet on wet blending here just to give some more color variation in this table. So I loaded my palette in some titanium white without rinsing my brush. I grabbed a little bit of that white and I kind of spread it out on the can of uh, the palette a little bit and then I'm just gonna gently take that white and kind of um, drag it in horizontal fashion across that brown. And it's going to create that sort of two-tone look, faux wood look we're going for with the white. Um, if your white is too bright and vibrant, go ahead and mix some brown into that white on your palette so it gets into it, so it turns into like a lighter brown so you don't want it to be bright white um, but a lighter brown will do it it's just enough to give that um, a different kind of color into the table so we're going to let that dry because and we'll do some texture lines later but it's too wet to do any texture lines uh, what we're going to do next is the the background so that um, the color that that mustard yellow background. Um, I have my palette loaded with yellow oxide and freshen up some titanium white if you need to. We're gonna still use that three quarter wash brush 
And so I have it double loaded in that yellow and the white and I'm doing uh, expressive strokes in the background. I'm doing wet on wet blending. I'm allowing the colors to sort of blend themselves. Um, down here I'm kind of using the tip of my brush to outline the edge of the table line. But all around that the shapes um, we're going to do these angular strokes, short angular strokes. Uh, sometimes I call these X strokes because it's almost like you're painting a bunch of X's everywhere and it creates that really pretty um, color mixing of the white with the yellow. So what we need to do is the whole background area around those coffee cups we're doing this technique and of course it will get kind of tricky when we get really close to the drawing um, so when when that happens we'll switch to a smaller brush so we can get in there but for now we're going to just kind of fill up those big areas with these um, short angular strokes going um, kind of in little X's everywhere. Um, if you want to have your strokes kind of contour around the coffee cups, kind of um, angle with the, the shape of the angle of the line of the drawing, you can do that. And also some areas have um, more white, some areas have more yellow, so we can kind of create some variation in the two different colors. Um, if you want uh, more white at the top where the steam's going to be versus maybe more yellow towards the bottom so that's kind of up to you or you don't really have to think about uh, what where your yellow and white are going to go you're just going to let the two mix together and kind of do their own thing so you can kind of just zen out so I have a smaller brush here so this is that what I was talking about when we get really close to that shape we want to use kind of a smaller brush so this is the number 12 flat and I swished it in some water and um, added it to that yellow oxide in the white uh, I did a little bit too much water in there so you'll find that when you do the water thing with acrylic um, it makes the two colors mix together more with when there's water in there so it'll turn into more of a solid color versus um, not so much solid with the unblended look so too much water will not really give it that unblended look so you kind of want to um, find a happy medium with the amount of water you're using um, especially if you're painting on an easel I'm painting flat but if you're painting on an easel and you end up grabbing too much water in your acrylic paint it'll start dripping down you don't want that to happen so a, a nice happy medium of water just to get it to flow right but not too much and then so I'm just kind of angling the shape so I'm kind of contouring out from the shape so I outline the edges of that drawing of that curve and then I'll go in there and kind of grab um, do some more X strokes to kind of make that edge line not look so noticeable and then I'm actually holding two brushes in my hand I have the three quarter flat in one and I'm switching back to that smaller one to get into those smaller areas so just swishing back and forth flip flop your brush go for the unblended look don't overwork it because then it'll all turn into one solid color um, unless you want it to be one solid color you can do that if you wanted to change the color of the background you can do that um, I found because I played around with the colors in this one before I came up with my final color results I found that a neutral color w worked best with this design because the coffee cups um, have these really bright sort of primary colors on them um, so any kind of primary or secondary color in the background would not it didn't really pop as well as a neutral color colored it so any kind of neutral color a gray would look pretty but I really like this yellow oxide because it kind of gives the indication of coffee because it's kind of a brownish yellow color and so I'm just kind of going over I really like how that white looks so I'm just adding some more white in that area again nice variety of different um, lights and darks in the background and again I'm not really thinking too hard I didn't 
think too hard about having all that white up there. It just kind of happened that way. So just kind of let the paint do its thing and relax. And um, this is a really super easy part, fun. Uh, also, if you want to paint the sides of the canvas, this would be the time to do it. I didn't demonstrate side painting in this tutorial. I just did the, the front of it, but I may go back and uh, paint the sides later. So this background actually takes quite a bit of time to do because we're working on a 10 by 20 canvas. So it's sort of a large area to fill up. Um, I'm actually going to go silent here. I'll put some background music on, but I'm pretty much doing the same thing I explained, but just really refining it, making sure that I am as close to those coffee cups that I filled up all of that negative space. So what I'm doing here is doing some more longer angular strokes with the white just to give it a little bit of pizzazz in the background. Just a final touch. Um, so I'm done with the background for the most part. I may go back and touch it up later, but I am going to go ahead and move on to, uh, we're going to do some texture lines on the table. I have a number four round brush and I'm getting that paint right there on the tip of the brush and I'm going to do um, a sort of spiral thing going on. I'll move my hand there. So I did a spiral and then I'll do kind of a, a sort of cat eye shape curved a few horizontal lines nothing too detailed but that um, little extra curve curves in the the wood to make it look like wood grain kind of adds a neat effect to the final result of the painting so that's what i did not too much detail just a few little horizontal strokes and some spiral lines and just with that brown oh if your brown is not showing up dark mine is because it's kind of the second layer but if it's not showing up dark you can always get a little bit of black and mix it into the brown so see how that looks it looks really pretty um, so anyway we're gonna go ahead and move on to the plate so I painted this going from the bottom up so we did the plate and then we'll do the next cup and then the next cup after that I'm gonna load my palette with Mars black and titanium white and then I'm gonna use my round brush to mix the color I want to make sort of a medium gray color so I'd see about three parts white and one part black mix it together to create a medium gray and I'm going to paint the uh, bottom inside part of the plate and um, so with the round brush our strokes are kind of contouring around that bottom shape of the coffee cup but I basically just want to fill that shape in so I'm going to kind of outline and curve around and the round brush is kind of nice because I could really get those curvy strokes in there and fill it in solid with that gray my plate ended up being kind of deformed but that's okay because um, it's sort of a whimsical painting so we don't really have to make the plate look realistic and so this entire area is that gray color and then the rim around the plate is a 
a white, a very a kind of a lighter gray. So I didn't rinse my brush, I just grabbed the white and started painting the rim. So because there's still gray on my brush, it turned into a lighter gray. And that's kind of what I wanted. So I'm painting the rim part of the plate next. And like I said, my plate got kind of deformed um, from the original drawing to actually painted it in, but that's okay because I'm just kind of going with it. This bottom part of the plate is gonna be a little bit thicker. And then I'm getting that gray again and I'm going back and kind of redefining this back area. And then, so under the cup itself is a little bit darker because there might be a little bit of shadow down there. So you can make a little bit of a darker color gray on your palette and um, add that to that part just under the, the cup that will be red. And then I did the, this area over here on the right, a little bit darker gray. And then I rinsed my brush off. So we're gonna do a shadowy sort of area under the plate. So with your brown, you can add a little bit of black to your brown to make it darker, or you can just do the brown and have it be a second coat under there, but just a few little horizontal back and forth lines right there under the plate gives it a little bit of shadow. Next, we're gonna paint the bottom red cup. I used Naphthol Crimson for this cup. Any red will do. If you don't have Naphthol Crimson, you can use cadmium, red, medium, any shade of red. I'm using a number 12 bright brush. So it's just like the flat wash brush, but it is smaller because we have a smaller area to paint in and just the red. And um, I'm doing this cup, but the strokes, I'm using the full width of the brush, but my strokes are going curved like that. And that curvature of your strokes is gonna give our coffee cup a little bit of form. And then have your number four round brush handy so that you can outline the rim, um, the top part of the cup and also the handle. So I'm not doing any shading yet. I'm just using the red at this point to fill in my shape, um, curved strokes to give it form, and using that uh, round brush to fill in the handle. Of course, the direction of the strokes of my handle have to kind of curve and go in the direction of the handle. So that'll help you get the form of the handle. I know my hand is sort of in the way there, but all I'm doing is filling in that shape. So that drawing and um, just filling it in solid. Make sure that you're filling it in all the way so there's no white areas of the canvas still showing through. If you accidentally go outside your lines, that is okay. You can make your way your own directions. You can pave your own way when you're filling these traceables in. You don't have to fill in the lines. They're just guidelines. And um, so I have two brushes in my hand again. So I'm going back and forth between that number four um, round and the 12 bright. Again, curved strokes. And the curved strokes really kind of gives it that expressive look. So we're gonna go and jump to a shading sort of thing. And I used burnt umber mixed with the red to do this. So take that dark red color you just mixed and paint the inside part of the coffee cup. So that part that's still kind of showing. So I'm using that number four round brush to paint that area in. So brown and red mixed together made that dark red. And I'm just gonna take this darker red color and I'm gonna kind of add some areas of darks. Again, I know my hand is in the way, there we go. And I just added, um, a, I outlined that 
part of the handle that touches the cup so it gives it kind of a darker depth area and over on the right I'm taking that darker red color outline the right part of the coffee cup and I'm just taking my round brush and kind of dragging the strokes kind of curved and kind of fast strokes curved sort of in the middle to give the coffee cup a little bit more um, color variation a little bit of depth then I don't even have to rinse my brush to do this but I grabbed some white and mixed it on my palette so now it's a lighter red I'm going to take that lighter red and I'm going to outline the top part of the rim so that's a different color in there and you can see and I'm just going to take that lighter red maybe I can do kind of a highlight thing going here on the left part of the handle and then kind of paint it over the stroke a little bit to blend it in better um, and when you do the white if it's too strong always take it and blend it back into the red on your palette so it kind of turns into a, a sort of pink color because too much white it's going to be too bold and too strong okay so we're going to go and do the next cup so this next cup i used brilliant yellow green and then uh, rinse all that red off your brush you may even need to change your water at this point to get it all rinsed off because that red was a really strong red and this um, brilliant yellow green is a, a light color So with my number 12 bright brush and my brilliant yellow green, I am going to paint in the next coffee cup. So um, think of it as a shape. I'm painting a shape in and um, using my brush to sort of outline the shape. And then when I fill in the middle, I'm doing curved strokes to give it a little bit of um, depth form dimension and get really close uh, we don't really want that green to hit the red then it'll start mixing together so be really careful in that area where that green touches the red but it goes all the way to the bottom because it is inside the cup and then switch to your number four round brush to do the handle with the green so paint the handle in I sped this area of the painting up um, just a little bit the video I sped up a little bit so press pause when you need to make sure that's all filled in this brilliant yellow green is pretty opaque for me so I didn't need to do a second coat over or anything here but we will do something else over it we'll use a darker green over it um, the next thing we're gonna do is so I mixed brilliant yellow green with the brown to just kind of make a darker color it actually made an interesting color from those two mixing together but that's what I did on the inside of the cup rinse my brush off and um, we're gonna load some hooker's green hue permanent so this is a darker green and we're gonna add sort of a layer of darker green on this cup but the effect is we're not gonna cover all of that lighter green and also my light green is not dry all the way so it may blend into that and that's okay so I'm gonna take this hooker's green and I'm gonna paint some of the handle with it but I don't want to cover all of that green I want a two-tone sort of color variation going on with this darker and light green and so those colors sort of blend together to create some interesting um, depth in that handle then I'm going to take that darker green and outline the rim and then I'm going to do um, again this is the number four round brush I'm using I'm doing curved strokes with that darker green so it's going to make this coffee cup look like it's got some depth um, curved strokes right there and um, again we're not covering all that green we're just kind of blending it with the lighter green but not all the way the next thing we're gonna do is the next cup and this one was done with turquoise blue and so I'm gonna use the number 12 bright brush same exact thing I'm gonna paint the shape of the coffee cup with the 12 bright brush 
but this time it's going to be that turquoise blue. So again, we're painting a shape in. We can use the tip of our brush to outline the shape. We can go in a curved direction to make it look like it has form. And we can use our number four round brush to really get into the smaller areas. You really want to make sure that that turquoise cup um, you want to pay attention to the fact that it's inside of that. Their, their cups are stacked, so the bottom of that turquoise has to touch the top part of the rim of that green cup. So paint it all in solid first. Um, to do some of the shading, I used the Hooker's Green Hue um, color. So grab a little bit of green without rinsing your brush and um, actually mix the two together. So mix the turquoise and the green together and paint the inside part of the cup so that it'll be that darker part on the inside of the cup. And then once you're done with the inside part of the cup, rinse your brush off and grab some white and do the rim part. If the white is too bright, mix that white with the turquoise to make a lighter color. But I just took that um, white and slightly outlined the top part of the cup. And then grab the turquoise and a little bit of that hooker's green color. Um, so the green and the turquoise, so it gives that darker color. And over here on the right part, I'm just slightly outlining it, but I'm gonna take it and just kind of do kind of what I did with that green cup. Just some curved, fast strokes gives it a little bit of a different color and also gives it a little bit of form by having that darker color in there. The next color I'm going to use is Dioxazine Purple. It's a very dark purple. And I'm going to use my 12 Bright Brush for that. Again, same thing. So with the purple, paint the cup. This is a really dark purple, so um, the cup will be really dark, but this purple um, mixes really well with white. So instead of doing that dark shading thing that I did with the turquoise in the green cup, I'm going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it and it actually creates a really pretty effect. I love mixing white with dioxazine purple. Um, so I will show you how I did that in just a second, but right now I'm just filling in my shape. So I have my round brush to get over here on the edges and then I'll use the round brush for the handle of the cup as well. Okay, so I'm going to freshen up some titanium white on my palette. And I did not rinse that purple off my brush. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white, kind of blend it a little bit on my palette. And so I'm gonna take that and I am going to do the handle. So a kind of a highlight over here on the left part of the handle and blend it back in. And I'm going to do the rim. So I really love having that white blend with the purple right there on the canvas. So here I switched back to my 12 bright brush. I'm just going to finish filling in the rest of that shape. And I will grab some titanium white on my brush without rinsing it. And I'm going to do that same thing. So some curved strokes. I'm not even going to mess with that. I like how that looks. That unblended look. We're going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to take my round brush, maybe kind of define the handle a little bit better right there with the purple. Do the outer part of the rim. And then actually the inside of the cup, uh, we could mix a little bit of Mars Black into that purple. It'll create a darker color for the inside of the cup. Then I'm going to rinse my round brush. I'm going to uh, redefine that rim part of the cup. So white and purple to make that lighter purple color. And I'm just going to take it and re-outline it to make sure it's nice and defined up there. 
and we have the back part of the rib too up here what I'm doing just because that would be you can see it so that lighter color for the back part of the rim and just because this is the top cup it's sort of important we want to see um, the whole part of the rim and also the inside of the cup then I wanted to do something down here on the plate. I decided to grab my round brush and the white, kind of redefine the white part of it, but I wanted a few strokes of white on the plate just to add a little bit of expression in that area and also redefine the plate just a tad bit there. I am going to finally refresh in my water. It's something I should have done a long time ago. It's like black water now. Um, but also I'm gonna fix this red cup. It's kind of lopsided on the bottom. So I just got the red and I'm just gonna kind of re redefine the bottom area to make it look not so lopsided. This next part is really fun. Um, I'm gonna do the designs on the coffee cup. So I have titanium white and my number four round brush. I'm gonna take the white and I'm gonna paint spirals. So using the white just on the tip of my brush, I'm gonna do spirals all throughout the cup. And of course you can change your designs if you wanna do different kinds of designs on, all on the cups. So to give it more of a effect that the spirals are on the cup, you can have some that are going off the edges a little bit or on the side of the cup. So you don't have to have them all centered. And then I did a, a white line on the left part of the handle. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the turquoise cup. So I did stripes on the turquoise cup and they're not completely vertical, they're, um, going curved because my cup is curved and so I'm taking that white and doing those lines this white was really dry here but I kind of liked it kind of gave it a dry brush effect um, but that I kind of liked that so I thought about maybe going back and making that white completely solid but I like how that looked with it um, it's not blending with the turquoise it's just that the paint coverage is dry so you're seeing some of that turquoise showing through okay and then for the green cup um, I did black spots so I did Mars black for the dots and these spots are not all the same size. They're slightly uh, varied from each other. And there's some that are going off on the side of the cup so they don't all have to be centered. You can even have some going um, towards the bottom that are kind of cut off because the cup is on the inside of the, the red cup. So they're kind of hidden. We don't see the other half of those spots. And then I chose not to do any design on the purple because I like how it looked. I didn't want to add any designs on it. I didn't want to touch it or do anything to it. But um, the next step I'm going to show you is how to do the spiral. So this is super fun. Um, I happen to see my spiral drawing from the traceable early, earlier. If you can't see yours anymore, you can always get a piece of chalk and draw out how you want it to be. Or you can just roll with it and do your spiral without drawing it first. But um, it's just titanium white and a round brush and I'm taking it and I'm doing the stroke rather quickly. So a quick stroke of that spiral with the white. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more flowy, you can add a little bit of white to, a little bit of white, a little bit of water to your white to get it to flow a little bit better. But I went over my spirals a couple times with this white and just to get it to be solid and then I decided to be a little bit creative with this because I don't ever usually let things just be one color in my paintings so I grabbed a little bit of black mixed it with white to make it gray and then I went back over it and just slightly added gray. I didn't outline the entire spiral again just a little bit of kind of the end of the spiral gives it some more dimension 
And then I decided that somehow, some way, there should be coffee inside the top of the cup. Because if there's steam coming out of the top of the cup, there would be coffee. So I grabbed some of that brown, and you may need to freshen your brown if it's dry by now. Um, and you can mix brown with white just to lighten it up a little bit because that's a dark area. So mix brown and white and do a few little um, sort of like curved lines on the inside. Gives it the indication that there is coffee on the top cup. I did one more thing to this painting because um, I don't know why it was bothering me, but it was. So I decided to do this inside part um, hooker's green. So I painted over that brown color with just hooker's green. And that is the last step I'm showing you in this whimsical stacked coffee cup painting tutorial. I had a lot of fun with this. I will be hanging this painting by my coffee area in my kitchen and that is it. That's the conclusion of this how to paint stacked coffee cups tutorial. I'm going to sign my name. I usually use these uh, really tiny round brushes. So this is a 10-0 round brush and Mars Black. And I water down my Mars Black um, to like an ink consistency. Kind of twist my brush to make sure that paint is right there on the tip of my bristles. And then I haven't been signing mine in the lower right corner. I've been finding some unique places kind of towards the middle of the painting. Um, so I'm doing my name over here on the side of the red cup. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.